the difference between technologies and the way they were sold 10, 12 years ago, um, where you could get booked, you got a perpetual license, maybe you got some uh, additional uh, services revenue, or you sold some additional capabilities in a new module. Now it's constant value attainment by the customer and, and, and everybody in sales, inclusive of the sales engineer, have to pay attention to that. Hey everyone, George Soto here, and you're watching Demo Diaries. Uh, today I'm joined by Jeff Winner, who was most recently Director of Software and Cloud Sales Engineering at Cisco. He's been in the space for quite a long time, and we're super excited to have him on the show and bestow some of your wisdom. Jeff, how are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I am doing great. I got to say, it's, uh, it's a good day, and you know, I'm in Miami, Florida after spending about a decade and a half uh, between the Bay Area and New York City, which are fantastic areas, absolutely. And I really attribute my career to being exposed to so many brilliant minds and companies out there, but I'm really happy to be home near my family. So, you know, can't complain uh, about that. I understand. A number of years back, my wife and I, we moved our family from the Chicago area back to Minnesota. Uh, just for that same reason, get back closer to family. So I Absolutely. totally understand. Yeah. Especially these days, I think it's more important than ever. And I'm really starting to see, you know, this like awareness of people being more aware of like, hey, this is a real necessity, right? So yeah. that's good stuff. Uh, why don't you take a quick second to introduce yourself and, you know, tell folks a little bit about your career background. Sure. Um, so as you mentioned, I've uh, been in this uh, space for quite some time. I actually started out my uh, career as a sales engineer um, for a startup software company out of Boulder, Colorado. Um, started out taking care of their network, their computers. It was a company of about 25, 30 people in the, in the organization. Uh, one day the VP of sales asked if I'd be interested in learning how to demo the products that the company sold. Uh, open to new challenges, uh, took that on and uh, was really blessed that it springboarded me right into a career that I've been doing for the past 25 years. Um, worked in uh, startup companies, like I say, of 25 to 30 folks um, with, with a company called New Scale for mm -hmm. nearly uh, 10 years. Uh, and in that organization, we got to about 150 before we were acquired by Cisco. And then uh, within Cisco, I've led a, had uh, a number of teams that I've led um, over my time in there. And uh, most recently, like you say, was the, uh, the director of the, the software and cloud automation team. So, yeah. Yeah. well, you know, you were there, I think about nine years, if I remember yeah. somewhere. So that's quite a long time, especially at tech companies, right? Yes, it is. It is. What would you say over the course of your career as a sales engineer has been sort of uh, a, a, one of the core definers of what the role is and why is it in you know we're seeing it really growing why do you think it's growing right right now as opposed to you know a couple years ago when SaaS started to really take off yeah I, I think the the role is becoming more and more critical every day um, because if you go back you know early in my career uh, it was really about presenting a product Right, a product, its capabilities, a few features. And um, really uh, what I've learned over the years is you need to make sure that you're translating what your product can do to solve a business problem, right? And really have a clear value prop uh, and make that connection for the customer. And that's where I think sales engineering is so critical, um, certainly within the uh, introduction of SaaS technologies because of the business model of the tech companies that are in play, right? Mm -hmm. You need to not just get a product sold, uh, a deal booked, but you actually need to ensure that the, uh, the expectations of the customer were well-established, that you have a vision with the customer about how they're going to achieve value. And then you really almost play a, a pretty key role in helping even during deployment uh, still providing that kind of guide and counsel to say, yeah, this is what we sold, this is what our expectations, and this is how we're going to get there. And whether it's uh, services by your own company or a partner, uh, the sales engineer plays a really key role in making sure that value is achieved. Uh, and then, of course, for the company that the sales engineer works for, that translates into recurring or renewable revenue. 
right? So you've got to make sure you're always providing value. And I think that's really um, the difference between technologies and the way they were sold 10, 12 years ago, um, where you could get booked, you got a perpetual license, maybe you got some uh, additional uh, services revenue, or you've sold some additional capabilities in a new module. Now it's constant value attainment by the customer and, and, and everybody in sales, inclusive of the sales engineer, have to pay attention to that. What would you say are some of the distinctions between working at a startup, for example, as a sales engineer uh, versus a large organization like Cisco, a large enterprise organization? Does the where the sales engineering team sits, does it change? Like, how does it evolve? Are there any like sort of like very obvious distinctions? I would say that uh, one of the, the major differences is by company size is has to do with um, the sales engineer is always going to be sit there and align to the account manager or the sales representative, right? Generally, you're going to have a two to one or a three to one type ratio of, of uh, you know, call them sales resources that the sales engineer supports. You get into a company like Cisco, um, larger organization, then you start having specialization by what are called architectures, right? And those would be specializations, say, in data center or enterprise networking or collaboration, et cetera, in the case of uh, some examples from Cisco. So the sales engineer has to kind of paint that whole picture for the customer, understand where the customer's business is going over the next 12 to 18 months, and then bring the best solutions to the customer that Cisco, in this case, would have to offer. Versus a mid-size or, or mid-market company, startup company, that sales engineer, they're, they're the jack of all trades. They've got it all from the, the business value alignment to they are the, the technical expert that's going to be doing the demo and the POC uh, and seeing it all the way through. So I think that's probably one of the, the major distinctions based on company size. And, you know, let's let's think about kind of the director uh, level when you're running, a, a, you know, bigger teams at these enterprise organizations. What does that director's day to day look like and how do you start to set up those middle managers that sit between you and the ICs? And, yeah. you know, what should that kind of like team be designed like? Yeah, so I think the, the thing that I've always found to be very effective when I lead other team leaders, right, is they, they've, got a, they've got a particular goal they've got to, to manage to, they've got technical skills, they've got to keep uh, their team up to speed on, et cetera. But as a director, what I always tried to do was make sure that everybody understood where the company's North Star was, right? Whether we were moving towards a direction around, uh, you know, enhanced security or a, a next generation of, of automation tools and technology, and starting to bridge where we can bring that, that um, value proposition to the customer that would otherwise not get to the customer because of the way we would want to sell is by a particular architecture or silo, right? Um, I think that's where the director, if you've got responsibility of teams under you, paint that North Star vision, make sure that everybody is uh, heading in that direction with the idea though that they have to execute on their own business and, and make sure that they're managing to that effectively. So does that help? Uh, yeah, it does. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you know, one thing that came to mind is sort of the balance between soft skills or qualitative stuff and then technical capabilities, right? Like in non-technical sales, we're constantly hammering, okay, you know, rapport building and relationships and these sort of like soft skill qualitative stuff. But then our versions of the technical or, you know, process oriented stuff is going to be, you know, more, more of that workflow, more of that uh, following process, more of the, you know, how do you enable uh, better sales engagements through tools and, and following through and et cetera, right? What would you say from an onboarding perspective is the, sort of the ratio or how do you actually start to train folks uh, around, you know, the, these soft skills, 
but at the same time, you know, it's such a huge emphasis, of course, on the technical piece, because of course, us sales folks, we, we don't get that, right? And we'll be in a meeting totally lost and, you know, trying to trying to speak to these technical pieces. And then on the sales engineering side, you know, it, it is important that, uh, that there is some of that uh, qualitative stuff as well. Like how much do you as leaders think about that and how much of that is in, integrated in your uh, training? Yeah, so I think about that all the time um, because I think it's so important that uh, between the sales resource and the sales engineer that there is uh, a separation of duties, right? To your point, you don't, it doesn't work real good if your sales uh, leader has too many uh, technical uh, you know, bits and jargon that they like to throw out there, but they can't necessarily assemble it in a cohesive way for a customer because uh, that doesn't do, do the customer any good. Uh, same, same vein on the sales engineering side, right? That's our job is to take the technical parts, put them together in a way that makes sense for the customer based on their business objectives and helping to bridge that, that gap for the sales resource. So um, I think when it comes to, and it, it does depend a bit on company size, um, because I think with smaller, mid-sized companies where that sales engineer is a jack of all trades, if you will, um, technical proficiency is certainly key, right? And, and I think that that's always going to be there. Um, but then they have to um, help that linkage to the business requirements um, and make that happen. So uh, I'll give you an example, right? Um, I think everybody on this uh, podcast probably has experienced the uh, just show up, do your demo, and uh, that's all they need to see. The customer will see the value and connect the dots. And um, I think, you know, I, I coach really hard on my teams to say, look, we need to do proper discovery, right? Mm -hmm. I don't care if you do the same demo flow you've done a hundred times before, if you've done discovery and you know something about the customer's requirements, you can take that same click stream and that clamp pattern and talk about it in ways that make more sense to the customer. And then they can truly connect the dots to how it can add value to them. Um, so just the, you know, show up and, and uh, you know, do the demo. Um, I think that's something that early in career sales engineers have to be aware of and have to have the, the um, uh, strength, if you will, internal strength to work with their account manager or their sales counterpart to say, look, let's do some effective discovery here. You know, it will actually pay off in dividends as we go forward. And, you know, based on your experience, what does a like, you know, tier one uh, sales engineer look like? A uh, tier one sales engineer is uh, a master of that relationship with the customers that they align to, right? Um, they know the ins and outs, the who the players are in that customer environment. Uh, they probably have been with that uh, organization long enough to know uh, past stops and starts that we've had um, so that they can uh, try to work through that. And they're also very good at being able to transition when they're, or transition or smooth over when there is turn on the customer side, right? A new CIO, CTO, uh, a new VP of infrastructure or service delivery, somebody's changed over there, that tier one SE um, or SA, they definitely have that ability to help with that transition and keep the company uh, that they represent relevant in future conversations. You know, we've been seeing, Jeff, these like demo engineering organizations now popping up and it, uh, I've been saying it reminds me of the segmentation that we saw on the sales side with inside sales, outside sales, SDR, you know, versus uh, a inside selling AE. What, what's your take on it? How do you think this, that the sort of, future, you know, what's the future state of the sales slash demo engineering organization look like? Yeah, I think it's a great, great question. And I think that you see, like to your point, you're seeing more and more of it um, showing up all the time. Um, I think, however, that makes the sales engineers role even more critical, right? When you start talking about needing to effectively translate the customer requirements, even if it's to that point that got that demo engineer, they're going to go through and they're going to do the same stream every time. Sales engineer has to coach them on what to say, where to say it. You know, here's the connection. I, I'll take it back to when I first started learning how to demo. 
uh, I look back and they had to be the worst demos I put any customer ever through, right? What, what did they look that? like, Jeff, if you don't oh, mind my sharing? Gosh, they were terrible. <laughs> they were terrible, I'm sure, right? You know, I was clicking through and I was showing features, doing very little connecting to a customer's needs, right? Why? Because I didn't know anything about their needs. I was asked to show up and do a demo. I think if we have demo engineers that aren't appropriately coached and guided into that engagement, it sets the sales, it'll actually, I think, hurt the sales process and the account manager and the sales rep will actually have to probably do a little damage control and ask for another another shot at it, right? So that's why I think the sales engineer is so key. If we're going to leverage demo engineers, which they have their place and that is a good thing to do, certainly with, with certain organizations, um, sales engineers got to you know, be the connective tissue to value. Awesome. Jeff, thank you so much for being on the show today. If folks want to follow you on social media, maybe connect to get some advice, what are the best like social handles? I'm guessing maybe LinkedIn. Do you have a, like a, a blog or any other channels they can reach you? So I don't have a blog or anything like that, but definitely I am on LinkedIn. So feel free to uh, connect to me uh, through that. Um, I can work with you to, to make sure that that uh, profile is attached here and, and we'll go from there. But uh, happy to to engage with anybody that uh, wants to dig to the next level of conversation. Awesome. Well, have a great day, Jeff. And thanks so much for being on the show. Yes. Thank you. Bye now. Awesome. Cool. There, there was a, uh, a police. Did you hear the police in the background? Nope. No, okay. Nope. okay, awesome. Yeah, the sirens. Jeff, thank you so much. If there's anything that we can do also to, uh, to help you, I don't know if, you know, what your plans are uh, moving forward. Yeah, but uh, we talk to a lot of different uh, organizations that, that need, uh, you know, sales uh, engineering leadership. So if there's yeah, anything I, we can do, let me know. Absolutely. I mean, I think just uh, doing what you're doing. I mean, I, honestly, I'm going to take this and I am going to post it. You Perfect. Know, and, uh, you know, I'm going to tie it to, if you look at my LinkedIn profile, some of the things I've highlighted there are some, um, uh, you know, Cisco used to have what was called Cisco TV. Um, mm -hmm. or they still have it. I, I shouldn't say they used to, it's still there. Um, but it was like a, a full blown broadcast type deal. And I uh, did a number of presentations on that globally, right? To thousands of, of systems and sales engineers there. So, you know, I've got little blurps on my uh, work history there. I will be posting certainly this type of thing in there as well. And just kind of, you know, working on that public speaking and getting that stuff out there. So hopefully, you felt like the content was good and then like, oh yeah absolutely i look forward to the post-production and we'll see sounds great yeah i will we'll let you know and we'll we'll push it out and um yeah thank you so much awesome. oh by the way we're gonna also probably roll out a demo and slash sales engineering university um primarily you know like on our end it's about thought leadership etc but also we we want to be able to provide uh, folks in the ecosystem and our customers with places to like recruit um you know up and coming demo and sales engineers and stuff so if you're ever interested in maybe being a you know a teacher on on or an instructor on on that yeah. um i'll keep you updated as yeah. well when we deploy that yeah, please do. I'm, I, I'm very passionate about this subject. I really am. And, and one of the last things I did at Cisco um, at the behest of the global VP of engineering, Tim Carnes, was uh, help lead um, an organizational shift for systems engineers. Because, you know, if you imagine with Cisco, it's a 30-year company and, yeah. and they sell products, right? I mean, at the end of the day, there are product sales. They say routers and switches. That they sell products. And a product sales motion is different than a solution sales motion. And you know that um, I can tell by just the questions and the way you, you know, see how I respond. So um, we have to shift to the booking, not being the important part, but mm. the customer value attainment. And uh, so I took that on for him um, personally, even though I was leading these other teams and I spent, you know, 30, 40% of my time doing other stuff with global strategy and planning on this subject alone. Um, because I do think it's very important and SaaS companies know it. They know that they've got to always provide value. Otherwise they're going to lose their customers, yeah. but companies like Cisco, and IBM, and some of the other ones, they, they don't. Right. And I think early on companies, they're so focused on trying to get that deal booked. They're not necessarily thinking about, can you book bad business? I oftentimes said to people at Cisco, I'm like, 
you can book bad business and it costs us more down the road to fix it than to book it right the first time, mm. you know? So happy to, to look into that when you start getting to those next levels of your, uh, your engagements, uh, anything I can do to help. Happy awesome. To Thank you so much for your time. All right, man. Take care. Take care. Bye.